How does one even draft a sleeve from scratch? Like we know what a sleeve looks like, right? But like where the where do the measurements even come from? Where does this what does this curve even mean? Why is this line here? What measurement is this? <sighs> if these are some of the questions that you ask when you see a sleeve pattern and you have no idea how to draft a sleeve pattern from scratch, then you're definitely in the right place. Hey guys, it's Tickle Design is Me. Welcome back to Design is Me Daily, where we design our own clothes, we design our own business, and we design our own lives. And as you guys know, a pivotal part about designing your own life is making sure that your mental health is in check and making sure that you are prepared to receive the life that you are trying to manifest. In today's video, we're gonna jump into drafting a sleeve pattern from scratch. I know that you guys could see this beautifully tailored um, blazer pattern in the back of me, hanging so effortlessly on my dress form. And y'all, I don't know about you guys, but to master the art of a well-tailored suit is to speak any language under the sun. I believe that a power suit introduces you before you have a chance to introduce yourself and so i've really been focusing on mastering my craft in terms of tailoring and the art of making suits so last night i drafted this pattern from scratch and to see how easy it was to draft this especially the sleeve because there is some very very key uh techniques in terms of drafting the sleeve um a regular basic fitted sleeve is different from drafting a bespoke sleeve specific for a blazer or suit all right it's not very very different but it is a little bit different and i figured since i was going to transfer this pattern to a twirl anyways just to test out the fit um i figured i'll just show you guys how to draft the sleeve and then we're gonna cut the fabric and fit everything and see how it looks so without further ado let's go ahead and jump right into today's video the first measurement that you are going to need is your overarm length and your overarm length is basically from the this point of your shoulder you should feel a little bone here or if you have a little bit more meat on your body that's okay but it's just the highest point of your shoulder right here you run the measuring tape from here all along your arm down to your wrist but making sure that you, your elbow is slightly bent the next measurement that you are going to need is your underarm length and your underarm length is one inch below your armpit running all the way down to your wrist the next measurement that we are going to take is the measurements for our biceps and it's basically the fullest part of your arm all right so just go ahead wrap your measuring tape around the fullest part of your arm and whatever that measurement is be sure to add one inch and that is your final measurement the next measurement that we're going to take is the circumference of our elbow you are just wrapping the tape around your elbow, making sure that your elbow is slightly bent because remember, clothes is about being functional. You have to be able to move comfortably in your clothes. All right, so go ahead and bend your elbow slightly. You're, you're wrapping the tape around your elbow, bend your elbow slightly, and whatever that measurement is, we are going to add a half inch to that measurement to give us our final measurement. Next measurement that we're going to take is the measurement for our wrist, and you're just going to wrap the tape around your wrist comfortably all right so you're just creating a very very loose sort of loop um, around your wrist and it should have enough room for you to move around it shouldn't be tight at all whatever measurement that you got for your wrist measurement you are going to add a half inch to that measurement just to make sure that it's comfortable enough for you to move and for the wider part of your hand to get through remember that you're creating a suit most of these most of the materials that we use to create suits do not have a significant amount of stretch if any at all so you want your measurements to be to have a little bit of ease a little bit of wiggle room because you don't want to be restricted all right you want to be able to put on your suit and feel like a bad b all right you want to feel like a boss you want to feel like the powerful man and woman that you are so just make sure that your measurements reflect what we want the next measurement that we are going to take is the circumference of our arm hole and whatever that you're gonna just jot that down whatever that uh, measurement is we are going to use that measurement in order to get the measurement for our cap all right this measurement is usually one third of your arm hole circumference so the measurement for your cap is one third of your arm hole circumference so we obviously need your armhole circumference all right so just go ahead and measure the circumference of your armhole jot that down and let's go ahead and begin so you're gonna need your pattern paper of course some sort of writing apparatus i'm just using a marker for the sake of this video but you guys definitely use a pencil with a nice accurate fine point you're gonna need some tape uh and elsewhere your measuring tape of course and a pair of paper scissors let's go ahead and get started 
So these are the measurements that I would be using for my sleeve and these are my measurements. As you guys can see for the overarm length, I have 24 inches for a really, really long sleeve and that's because um, the 24 inches extends a little way past my wrist but that's just because I like my sleeves a little bit longer. But the perfect length in terms of the overarm length from um, uh, the tip of my shoulder to my wrist, the accurate measurement is 22 and 3 quarter inches. All right, so of course, the same rules are going to apply to your own measurements, but these are the measurements that we are going to use for this video. We're just going to rest our measurements really, really close by because we are going to need them as a reference. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to draw a straight line down our page, making sure to leave room on this side as well as this side. All right, the line that we are drawing first is our green line and it is the center of the sleeve. All right, this measurement is the overarm length. So this line is actually for the overarm length. And as you guys know, our overarm length is 22 and 3 quarter inches. All right, 22 and three quarter inches. So we may have to extend this line just a little bit, but that's okay. Are we gonna extend it up or are we gonna extend it down? It really does not matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. All right. Okay, we can extend it up. We have enough room on the page to extend it up. So 22 and three quarter inches. And what we're gonna do is we are going to mark the tip of this line as A and the base of this line as B. Now the next thing we're gonna do is, we are going to measure from B to C, and from B to C on this line is the underarm length. And as you guys know, our underarm length was 16 and three quarter inches. So we're just measuring 16 and three quarter inches up the line, put a point right there, and we are going to label this point C. Now from C to A should give us our cap length, cap height, sorry. All right, and as you guys know, our cap height is one third of our armhole circumference. So one third of 18 should give us six. Let's go ahead and measure that. Perfect, six inches. All right. All right, so I have to shift the camera just a little bit so that you guys could see on top of here. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to square line across C, and this is the reason why it's really important to have a square ruler i'm going to use this one just because that one i just choose to use this one <laughs> all right so we're going to square a line across oh wow not me not knowing how to square a line <laughs> all right so we're going to square a line across that c i'm just going to square that line across that c same thing for this side great and what we're going to do now is we are going to um, mark this line D and E. And D and E basically give, uh, D and E measures the circumference of our bicep. So you guys know that my, bi my bicep was 12 plus 1. So that is 6.5 on either side to give us a full 13. All right, so 6.5 on this side, we mark right there. Another 6.5 on this side to mark at 13. All right, so we are going to call this point D and we're gonna call this point E. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna square a line at D, just like how we would have squared a line at C, we are now going to square a line at B, and this measurement is going to be for our wrist circumference. All right, so exactly how we just did it. Okay, not me not knowing how to square. Ugh, listen, you all, <laughs> it happens sometimes. I need to invest in another graph ruler, as you guys know my graph ruler. My son broke my graph ruler a while back. All right, so we squared a line at B, and this measurement is going to be F to G, and it's the circumference of our wrist. All right, as you guys know, the circumference of our wrist was seven and a half, so we are seven and a half, that is three and three quarters on either side. All right, so three and three quarters on this side, and we have three and three quarters on this side for seven and a half. This point is going to be labeled F. This point is going to be labeled G. So we're now going to mark the elbow point and the elbow point is basically half of this line. So this B to C line, we're going to measure. We know that B to C is 16 and three quarters. So we're just going to find the half of that. And as you guys know, we just 
fold our measuring tape in half to get the most accurate and easiest measurement. All right, so that measures eight and three eighths. Okay, so eight and three eighths, eight and three eighths. This is our elbow point, and we are going to label that H. We're gonna square a line across that H, just like how we did the other lines the previous times before. Square a line at H. Great. So now we're gonna find the elbow position, and the elbow position is basically three quarter of an inch higher than the H point. All right. So the H point. We know that H is here. We're going to measure three quarter inches above H and we're going to label this I. So this line that we would have just squared across for H, we are going to measure our total elbow circumference. And this new line is going to be called J to K. All right. So our circumference for the elbow was 11 and a half. All right. So 11 and a half let's just go ahead and find the midpoint 11 and a half that should give us five and three quarters all right so five and three quarters on this side and five and three quarters on this side for the full 11 and a half all right we are going to call this point j and we're going to put, call this point k what we're going to do now is we're going to connect all of these lines so g to k to e f to j to d all right, and depending on your measurements, this may not necessarily be a straight line because as you guys can see, if I try to line E with G, we're gonna be taking off a little bit from K. All right, so the question is, are you guys, are you willing to take off this amount? Does it have enough ease on your elbow measurement to take off that amount, which is about a half inch on each side? Or um, are you able to maybe add a little bit more to the wrist so that we can maintain the integrity of our elbow measurements and the wrist, the, the wrist will just be a little bit wider. Now, what we could do is, you can make that decision for yourself. However, I know there was a little bit, uh, a little bit of wiggle room on my uh, elbow measurement, so I could afford to take off a little bit from there. So what I'll do is, I'll compromise between the two. I would take off a little bit from there, and I would also add a little bit to the wrist, all right? So as you can see, it's lining up. It's lining up there. I'm taking off about a quarter of an inch from the elbow and I'm adding a quarter of an inch to the wrist. Now, if you want to be specific, really, really specific and detailed, you can just connect G to K and then K to E and keep that as a really, really custom measurement. However, for the sake of keeping this video really simple, I would just uh, make, the, make the shift. All right. So... All right, and obviously you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Awesome. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to square a line across that A. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna extend this line all the way into the line we just squared across and we're gonna do the same thing to this side extend the line all the way into this line that we just squared off and you should have a block currently looking like this we're gonna call this point l and we're gonna call this point m let me just adjust the camera a little bit so that you guys can see exactly what i'm doing all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to focus on getting the curve and we're basically going to be curving, um, we're gonna be focusing on these three points, all right? Because as you guys know, our curve has to um, perfectly blend into those three points. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to point E and we are going to measure whatever our measurement is from E to C. Let's measure from E to C. From E to C, we have about uh, six and a half. We are going to measure a quarter of that. All right, so a quarter of six and a half. Let's go ahead and do it together. Quarter of six and a half. Quarter of six and a 
is one and five eighths. All right, so we're just gonna measure one and five eighths in. Mark that point, and we're going to call that point N. All right, same thing, we're gonna go over to the other side. And because, as you guys know, just like anything else, the sleeve has a left, a back and a front, sorry. So the back of the sleeve is a little bit uh, different from the front and vice versa. Okay, so we're actually taking off the front. It dips a little bit more in than the back does. And that's just because of the way the body is shaped. All right, so for between E and N, we measured one and five eighths. All right, so it's a quarter of this measurement, but for this measurement, which is from D to uh, our point O, which is what we're going to get right now, it measures one-sixth of C to D. So we are going to measure from here to here. All right, same six and a half because this is accurate. All right, and we're going to measure one-sixth of six and a half. So we're going to... Divide this in half. And because this is one sixth, we're going to need to do like a little bit of an estimate here. All right. So we have three and a quarter. So I am just estimating that one third of that would be, um, would be about one and a little bit. All right. So not even one eighth, like one and one sixteenth. Okay. So one and one sixteenth. It's just an estimate, guys. Your estimate might be a little bit different, okay? But just know that you're measuring between C and D, and it's one sixth of that measurement to get our point O. We're gonna move up to our LAM line, and what we're gonna do is we're measuring from A to M, seven and a half, and a quarter of that measurement is going to give us our point that we are going to label P. All right, so seven and a half. We're going to find a quarter of that. A quarter of that, which is one. And let's just make sure. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. Seven and a half. Half of that. And then half of that again. All right, so one and seven eighths. So from A, one and seven eighths will give us this marking right here. We're going to call this P. Same thing we're going to do for here. Measure A to L, which is the same thing. So we know that we're just taking that same measurement. One and seven eighths. And this marking we're going to call Q. Going to connect our O point to our Q point like so and we're going to connect our P point to our N point like so as we are going to divide our A to C measurement in half so we know okay our cap is six inches divided in two at three inches and we're going to square this line across We're going to square this line across like so. And the last steps are pretty, pretty simple. We are just going to shape the actual uh, curve of the sleeve. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to draw a tiny diagonal line, probably like about a half inch maybe, from N. We're going to do the same thing from O. We're going to do the same thing from P, but instead of going in the direction that we went for, for, for these, we're going to go in for this tiny line, guys. Same thing for Q, tiny line. What we're going to do now is you can freehand this the way I'm freehanding it, or you can use your curved rulers if you feel like using your curved rulers. All right, so all we're going to do is we're going to curve our line from here. Blend it in like so, and we are going to curve, curve the cap like so. Same thing for here, curve the cap, blend it in. Same thing for here, 
could be cut, blend it in. All right, and that is basically it for the way we draft a sleeve from scratch. Now, this is our basic sleeve. In order to make the slight adjustments to get our uh, custom blazer sleeve, we are going to need to transfer this pattern to some new paper because we are going to implement the slash and spread method in order to incorporate a dot at our elbow line. The reason why we are transferring this to new pattern paper is because we want to maintain our basic sleeve pattern um, but we also need the basic sleeve pattern in order to create our blazer custom pattern. So go ahead and transfer so that you can save one and cut one. So now that we have our pattern accurately transferred onto another clean piece of paper, um, just I thought I should mention this line that we would have just, uh, the last line that we would have squared off before creating our curve, um, we just labeled it R and S just for the sake of not leaving that point blank because we have to know where our lines came from and things just don't appear out of nowhere. All right, so we're labeling this line R and S. Once we have our pattern cut out, once again, we are going to cut into our elbow line in order to create our dot. So we are cutting into our line from J to K, but we are not cutting through the entire uh, sleeve. We are cutting and we're leaving the pattern connected at K. Alright, so as you guys can see, we cut through the line, but it is still connected at key. This is what we want. We are now going to transfer this pattern, put this pattern piece on a brand new piece of paper. And this is going to be the last transfer because obviously our completed pattern has to be a perfect pattern. Fresh paper, the first thing we're going to want to do is draw our green line on this page. All right, and this is the line that we are going to use to line up our sleeve pattern as well as to ensure that we pivot. Go ahead and grab the sleeve pattern. Line it up using your green line. I have some tape on mine. Line it up using your green line. Secure the top half of the sleeve first. All right, secure the top half of the sleeve to your page first. And what we're going to do now is we are going to pivot. And pivot simply means this. All right, we are going to pivot the bottom half or J one inch. All right, so. J. J should now measure one inch away from this part right here. Okay, so pivot. Okay, sorry guys. Pivot just like that. And it should measure one inch. Okay. So one inch apart and secure your bottom half of your sleeve. Like so. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our dot in the elbow. We're going to measure J to I. Remember, I is right here. This is our new J. We're going to measure J to I, which should give us about 5 and 5 eighths. And our dot, our dot point is 2 thirds of that measurement. I would say it is roughly 1 and 3 quarters. <clears throat> so one third of the five and a half or five and five eighths would be about one and three quarters all right so remember it's two thirds so one and three quarter another one and three quarter so that is about three and a half all right should be somewhere around there we are just going to mark that line or connect that line sorry we're going to connect j to this point right here for our dot dot leg 
all right and what we're going to do now is we're going to trace the entire pattern making sure to insert all of our major lines onto this new paper and this is going to be our completed pattern once we have our pattern accurately transferred to our brand new page, we can now add our allowance and label accordingly. All right, so we have our arrows for our green line. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the word green line going down the entire line. Let's go ahead and insert our notches so that we don't forget to insert our notches. So we know that this is the front of our pattern and this is where our um, whole notch goes to represent the front to represent the back we put two notches to represent the back all right and it's usually just a quarter inch apart from each other on that same line what we're gonna do is we are going to throw our elbow darts as well as add a half inch of our one to our entire pattern Just a quick reminder on how we threw our darts, guys. I went ahead and folded my dart leg in. All right. And what we're going to do is we're just going to blend our line to make sure that the line is straight while our dart is close. All right. And that is how you threw your dart. Now, at this point, this is where you would use a tracing wheel to transfer this little marking right here. I don't have a tracing wheel close by, so I'm just using my scissors to transfer that mark. Okay? And as you guys can see, I don't know if you all can see that, but we just transferred. We just transferred that line. And this is how it should currently be looking. All right? Now that we have trued our elbow dart, we can now add our half inch allowance to the entire pattern, finish labeling our pattern, and then we're done. All right, there you have it, guys. This is our completed pattern. Go ahead and label your pattern with the design number as well as the name of the pattern. This is just our basic jacket or blazer sleeve. The size, this is a US size 6 or size small and you are cutting 2. Now, we only added a half inch allowance to our wrist because all of our sleeves intend to be uh, fully lined. However, if you are not, actually, you know what? I'm not even going to encourage you guys to not line your sleeves. So I'm not even telling y'all. <laughs> okay, line your sleeves. that is it that is it for the end of this video we drafted our entire sleeve pattern from scratch we cut out our muslin sample and this isn't stitched together this is just a drape the pieces are held together by pins we tested the fit as you guys can see just like what i was saying in terms of the difference between a regular sleeve and a tailored jacket sleeve you can see that the sleeve actually comes forward just a little bit and that is because of this dart the dart that we put in the elbows that is because of that dot, all right? Very, very important when it comes to like bespoke tailoring and bespoke suits. So I really, really enjoyed, I enjoyed drafting the sleeve and I enjoyed testing it out and I feel really, really happy and pleased. And if you guys drafted this pattern along with me, I really hope that you guys are proud of yourselves. I am super proud of you. And um, yeah, that is it. If you all enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like these, do not forget to leave me a like. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Subscribe to my channel. Share this video. Share, share, share. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.